Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Today's episode, number 41, is making the best use of your fabric. But before we get to that, let's get to my opinion. Today we're back to the exact same unit we did last time. Square and a square or square squared, whatever you call it. It's a center square with four half square triangles around it. And the easiest way to do it is to sew two half square triangles on press, then sew the other two on press, and then you trim to the correct size so that you get accurate quarter inch seam allowance around. So when you attach your next, next piece, your, um, your points match. So I was watching Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop, and this is no slam on her. I like her, I like her videos, I like her patterns, but this is an interesting thing to point out to you. She was doing the Socialites 2 block 10, and in the center of the block was a square and a square, and she said she has difficulty getting it correct, so she decided to use foundation paper piecing. Now the first thing that I think of when I make a decision is to whether I'm going to traditionally piece something or I'm going to foundation paper piece, is if it, it can be done traditionally and get a good result, I would much rather do it that way than foundation paper piecing that takes more prep work. And then of course you have to rip the paper off at the end. So she wanted to do it foundation paper pieced. And the reason is, I believe, that she can't get the center square the right size. And the math on the center squares, as Deb Tucker would put it, is ugly, which is why she provides you on her rulers for square squared a um, window template, which of course lets you, um, lets you uh, fussy cut, but it's the measurements. Like if I look at this two inch finished block and I measure it, it's a number that's smaller than two, but bigger than one and seven eighths. There is no way you have on your ruler at home a line that you can line that up with. So what Deb has you do is you cut the closest size strip of fabric, then you use the ruler, line it up with your window here and trim, trim, so you get the exact right size. And that's what I've done here. I cut this to the correct size. I cut four half square triangles, two squares cut in half diagonally, and you sew them on, press, sew them on, press. This is what I get. I've already trimmed one side. These two are already trimmed. You use her ruler to put here so my twos all line up. And then I trim my final sizes. And I've got a perfect square squared without having to foundation piece. Now the other thing that Kimberly wanted to do was press her seams open. Well, in foundation piecing, you sew your piece on, like here, and you flip it over and you press so it's not pressed open. So she had to peel off the paper so that she could then go in and press these open. And to me, if you're deciding to do foundation paper piecing, you've already decided not to press your seams open. If you wanna press your seams open, do it the traditional way and just press them open. Simple, no difficulty. The last thing I want to point out is if you use a different size center square, you can still get a square and a square. Your um, seam allowance will be different. In this one, um, it uses a two and a half inch center square, which is actually a little bit too small for this size square and a square. Here's using the correct size. Now it's very difficult to see, but if I put a ruler up on here, 
there's a quarter inch from the point to the edge on all my four sides and there's three eighths here. Now there's nothing wrong with that if that's the uh, aesthetic you want to achieve, if that's how you want it to look, if you want your squares to float a little bit. There's nothing wrong with it, but if you want this to be a quarter of an inch so that it meets whatever is sewn to it, um, you want to use the correct size center square. And it's the same issue I said before, is there's no line on the ruler that's going to get you this size. This is a two and a half inch square, which is why some people use it. Just to point out that you can do it any way you want to do it, but you will get two different results, even though it's ever so slightly different. So that's my opinion for today. I would much rather choose traditional pieces piecing over foundation paper, paper piecing, given the choice. Let's get to the episode. So today I want to talk about making the best use of your fabric. This started with an employee of mine asking me when she was putting on borders for a quilt for a client, should she do the side pieces first or the top and bottom pieces first? And I said, it depends. You always want to make the best use of your fabric. So let's start with borders first. Here's a really easy, clear example. Sometimes the numbers are much closer and it's not as easy to see as this one. But say, for example, your quilt is 60 by 41. Now, normally in quilt patterns, they will tell you to do the sides first and then do the top and bottom. But look what happens if you do the sides first here. If you do the sides first here, you're not going to get this out of a full width of fabric. If you do the top and bottom first, one and a half strips of fabric will get this side and one and a half strips of fabric will get this side and you'll be all good. So in this case, you would definitely do top and bottom first and sides second. Now, another place where you want to think about cutting pieces and what order you're going to cut them is when you are cutting some pieces that are shorter and some pieces that are longer from the same fabric. If you do all your shorter pieces first, you won't have enough length without piecing together the, the required fabric for the longer pieces. Or if you do have enough fabric, you'll be using a lot more strips of width of fabric and putting more into your scrap pile. Now, if I can stop any piece of fabric getting into my scrap pile, I'm a happy camper. So I want to think before I cut. An example where I have shorter and longer um, is when I do something that's hexagonal or octagonal. And in the hexes, if you're putting a border on, you've got three shorter borders and you've got three longer borders. Why is that? Because after the shorter ones are on, the longer one becomes longer by the width of the two shorters. So many times, if you take a full width of fabric, depending on how big this hexi is, you could get all three shorter from one piece. But the next piece is not long enough to get the three longers. But if you cut, you take two from the first strip for the two shorters and then use that remaining piece for the longer. The second piece can be long enough for the two longers and the shorter. So that doesn't always work. That, that's the hard thing about this episode is there's no hard and fast rules because you have to look at how big yours is and how big the width of your um, border is. If you're doing an inch border, cut at an inch and a half, your longer piece only grows by two inches. Whereas if you're doing a four inch border, your longer piece grows by eight inches. So it's not a rule of if it's this, do this. It's really a think before you cut. And that's, that, this is really my only rule. Don't cut all of your shorter pieces first. 
because you probably won't have enough left for your longer pieces without more strips cut. You can always cut more strips. Um, but the bottom line is think before you cut. Now, one place where this issue comes up a lot is in these uh, log cabins and diamond log cabins. And for the Christmas tree skirts, I've done several diamond log cabins. So if you look at this one that I made, and it, I decided that it wasn't going to be a Christmas tree skirt, it was going to be a table topper or tablecloth, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can see that these pieces here are way shorter than these pieces here. So you're going to need a lot less of these than you will of these. And as you cut your strips, sometimes the directions are really good and sometimes they're not. And I have a very um, egregious example to show you. And as I said before about Kimberly, I love Kimberly in the Fat Quarter Shop. This one is back to Amanda Murphy. And again, she's terrific. I love a lot of her products, but this is a place where I would not follow her directions and I would make better use of my fabric. Give me one second, I'll be right back. This is Amanda Murphy's Christmas Magic Tree Skirt. And I've showed this to you before when I was talking about the binding of it. But now I wanna talk about the strip cutting and piecing. In this tree skirt, there are eight of these kite shaped pieces, four units, I should say, four green and four red. And in her um, fabric requirements, she tells you a third of a yard of each of the fabrics. Well, your first hint that you can't possibly need a third of a yard of each of these fabrics is clearly you do not need as much of this one as you do of this one. And to make our store sample, we did actually cut a third of a yard of each of the fabrics. And this is what I had left. I have almost nothing of the, the red and the green that are used in the most outermost positions. And then I have a lot left of the two shortest positions. And fair amount of the, the middle positions. And the way she has you do it is she tells you to cut four strips of two and a half inches from each fabric. And then she has you sew them onto the side of the kite. And if you look at the pictures, there is a heck of a lot of waste in these. And to me, I don't want to be throwing this into my scrap heap. I want to make a better use of my fabric. So I can tell you that in this position, I got all um, of my pieces out of two strips. I was able to get four from here and four from here. No, no problem. So when you're, before you cut everything, if you had cut everything and then realized it, you'd have more in your two and a half strip pile that you have to figure out what to use. Um, and the other issue is, what if you had the perfect red or green at home you wanted to use, and you, but you said, gee, I only have two strips of it, or I only have five and a half inches of it, so I don't have a third of a yard. Well, you can still use your two strips of it or five and a half inches of it if you put it in the shorter position. The only ones you have to make sure you have a full third yard are the two outermost positions. So in the end, don't cut everything out. Like a couple times when I was making this, I cut two strips and I needed to cut a third. It's okay to cut one more, but if you cut four and only use two, you can't put them back together again. So just be mindful of what instructions read and think before you cut. And I think you'll make a better use of your fabric if you do it that way. So I hope you got something out of this video. 
If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, happy sewing.